Okay, in this example, we're going to use ADS load pull simulation to find the input and output load parameters for a power amplifier, and then we're going to design the power amplifier. So from ADS, you can go to open up a schematic. We'll just open up a generic schematic for the time being. And under design guide amplifier, a menu will pop up and there's a drop down for power amplifier examples by class and operation. Let's look at a class B load pull. So we're going to double click this and open it. And when we do, a couple of windows are going to open, a plotting window and a schematic window. Now inside of this power amplifier object, we can push into it using the green arrow here. And in the default schematic, a uh, default model transistor from the, light, from the uh, ADS uh, kit will be uh, used. If you have other model transistors, you can replace the model transistor with, those, with, with the particular model you're looking for. So for instance, here I have some Cree GAN transistors that I'm going to look at. These are 50 volt uh, GAN transistors. And so I've replaced the default transistor with this Cree transistor. And now I'm going to go back up to the top level schematic. Now we're doing a power amplifier design at 850 megahertz. We know that the transistor has a gate bias that will be a negative voltage to control the hemp. And we know that the drain voltage should be 50 volts. So I'm going to make the change to 50 volts for that bias voltage. And then for the time being, we can leave everything else the same. All right, so to run this simulation now, we just click the gear wheel here. It will run the simulation. And now we can look at the results. So here you can see the power contours and PAE contours for the power amplifier. You can see that the operation yields a peak power of about 44.3 dBm and a peak efficiency of about 33% at that. And, and the contours almost overlap one another. You have a couple of squares here, one that shows you that the maximum power occurs for a, this particular load. The maximum PAE occurs for this particular load. And then down here, there's a nice uh, feature where you can move this marker and it will tell you what the PAE and power delivered will be if you present this particular impedance to the, uh, to the PA. So what we're going to try and do is present the impedance closest to the maximum power, which occurs at this particular marker spot. So we need to present the PA with a load impedance of 9.8 plus J 4.2. And at the input, we want to see 0.25 minus J 0.05. So I'm going to design these matching networks really quick, and we'll see what they look like. OK, so using Will Kelsey's online Smith chart tool, which you can find by doing a little bit of Googling. I've decided to de design uh, two shunt stub matching networks, and I'm doing short-circuited stubs so that I can pass DC through the transmission line. Here I've started at 50 ohms, at, and I need to achieve a fairly low source impedance. And I've designed the network in order to get me uh, to the desired impedance. You recall that the desired impedance was something like 0.25 minus J.0. 05, something along those lines, or we're pretty close here uh, to that impedance. Similarly, the output, we had a goal that was something like 9.8 plus J 4.2. Uh, we're using a similar matching network, just a short circuited stub matching network, where we've calculated the links in order to get the desired impedance. And if we look at the result, we see 9.8 plus J 4.2, which is pretty close to what we were looking for. So now we're going to make a power amplifier schematic that incorporates these 
matching networks into the schematic. Here I'm starting with that blank schematic that we had opened up just a little while ago, and I'm going to add my power transistor into the mix here. And now I'm going to add a few more components and I'm going to pause here. I'll add the components and you and, and then pause again so we can reflect on what's there. Okay. So here I've added my transmission line matching networks. You can see this the the stub and the short length of transmission line at the input and at the output. And I'm going to add a couple of more things. First, I want to add a current monitoring component. So I'm going to add an iPro. And I want this going in the direction the current is going to be flowing in the transistor. So I'm going to go to edit mirror about Y. And I'm going to place the iProbe right near the transistor's drain. I'm going to wire that up. Now, generally, in my power amplifier schematics, I don't like to include any components that couldn't be realized with a physical implementation, but it is convenient to be able to monitor the current uh, in, at this particular stage of the simulation. So that's why I'm adding it right now. Now, I also want the power amplifier to be AC coupled, which means that we need to have fairly big coupling capacitors at the input and output to make sure that the DC uh, doesn't go towards the, the uh, port. Here I'm going to add a cap at the input side and I'm going to similarly add a cap at the output side. I'll wire those in. All right. Always a good time to save your design. And I'm going to give this something a bit more specific than the generic name that we gave it when we defaulted. So I'm going to call this class B power amplifier for the time being. OK, now I like to work in terms of a hierarchy. So I'm going to add ports to this design. I'm going to add Port one is going to go as the input port. Port two is going to go as the output port. Port three will go as the DC port on the input. So this is how we're going to pass DC into the design. And finally, port four is going to go as the DC at the output side of the design. Let's wire those in. All right. Now we have a complete power amplifier design where we have a matching network, albeit it's an ideal matching network. And we have input and output ports for the DC and RF components, and we have a port in or a probe in order to measure the current flowing through the drain. Now we're going to turn this into a component that we can instantiate in upper level schematics, such as testbed schematics. In order to do this, we're going to go to window, symbol, and it's going to ask if we want to create a new symbol. We can do that. There are some advanced options that we can look at. Uh, they don't really show much. It's just the view name in this case. So we'll go to create symbol and it'll pop a new window up. And we can auto generate the symbol. We can do this as a dual symbol where the ports are all on one side or the other side and they have some different numbering schemes that we can use. Or we can do a quad symbol where the ports are on all four sides of the symbol. I prefer to do this for the PA. We're going to put the input and output on opposite sides and the DC voltages for the gate and the drain on opposite sides of the PA. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it's created our symbol for us. Now we can modify this and do some custom drawing if we want. And I'm going to do that. And you know, we, we do that simply by you know, we can stretch things out uh, and, and whatnot. 
So I'm going to modify the design and pause it here, and then we'll look at the results. Okay, so here's my finished drawing. You can see that I changed the orientation of some of the ports. So I put port one at the end, at where I would call the input, port two where I'd call the output, port three at the bottom, port four at the top. And I've made sure to label that port three is the gate bias and port four is the drain bias. I could have been more descriptive in my port names and it would have prevented having to add those particular names. Uh, but for the time being, uh, I just left these as, as numbers. All right, so we are done at this point. We can save this, uh, th this symbol and we are going to instantiate this created symbol in our next uh, design uh, where we're going to do a test bench uh, to test the output power of the power amplifier. So until next time, we'll stop there.